Yo, what is going on guys? So on today's episode, we have some women who are trying to date after divorce. As always, it is absolutely hilarious. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments. Let's jump in. Three things I have learned through dating after divorce. One, do not project your past ex's toxic traits onto your new partner. They are not them. We have these triggers and these responses of like, oh, that means this, and this means this, and that means they are gonna be just like my ex. Don't do that. Don't project. Give them the chance. Give them the opportunity to show that they are not your ex. They are not that person. Number two, asking your relationship needs to be met is not selfish. Basic communication, honesty, trustworthiness, all these things are bare minimum. Yeah, guys, you know, now that I'm 30 plus years of age, or now that I'm divorced, I expect honesty, I expect clear communication, and I want a real man. You know, there is nothing wrong, guys, in my opinion, with communication and honesty and all of this kind of good stuff here. Um, but the funny thing that these dating coaches neglect to mention is that all throughout their 20s, uh, they were completely screwing around with dudes who didn't give them any of this stuff. I mean, if you sit down and you have conversations with modern women and you ask them what dating is like, or particularly when they were younger and things like this, they will sit there and tell you, oh, all the boys are awful, you know, it sucks, or and all of this kind of stuff. But now they get to this point in their life, now that they're divorced and they need somebody else to come along and look after them, now they value things like communication and honesty. Honesty, trustworthiness, all these things are bare minimum. Are not being selfish by saying i need better communication or i want more quality time together or whatever it may be you asking for that and expecting that other person to step up is not selfish and if they can't give that to you don't take it personally that person has their own set of expectations experiences traumas that they're dealing with and so if they can't meet those relationship needs don't take it personally probably just not your person authentic goofy weird silly self i just want to pause it here for a second guys and let you know that um i am not the one who is adding this obnoxiously loud piano music okay my videos they have some pretty bad audio i'm not gonna lie um but that is not me putting that in there just a heads up now it's funny because she sits here and she says you know you're not being selfish you you know you need to have your relationship expectations and if he doesn't meet that then it's fine whatever but that's not your person again guys if you talk to these women throughout their 20s the type of men that they are dating all of these bad boys that they've been with in their past they don't have any re uh, relationship expectations of these men but they will sit here and they will have relationship expectations when they're 30 plus, right? When bills need to be paid, all of a sudden these relationship expectations, you know, she's not willing to compromise, but she'll compromise for the men who are attractive. Okay, very, very interesting how that works. And we try and convince men, you know, we want the attention. We want you to meet our relationship needs. We want you to do X, Y, Z. But if you look at her dating history, the men that she's dated previously, again, they don't have to put in any of this crap. They'll still chase him if he's attractive enough. It's okay to be yourself. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to talk about your insecurities. It's okay to not like reading books if they read books. The second you start deciding, like, I, I can just change this one thing about me, eh, wrong guy. Because the right guy is going to love you exactly for the way you are. Hey, it's Jenna, and I'm recently divorced and sharing all the craziness that I'm learning trying to date in 2023. Um, the biggest thing I find is it is crazy the amount of men who try to get into my inbox, friend request me, private message me, Snapchat me with full ass girlfriends or wives in their profile pictures and all over their social media and expect me to actually want to add them as a friend, converse with them, try to get them out of them. It always amazes me, guys, that you have modern women who are trying to get on the internet and it's all about attention for them. Look how many men are in my inbox. Look at all these guys that are messaging me. Look how much attention I get. Look how ridiculous these men look. Look, they have girlfriends and wives. Now, obviously, guys, don't be, if you're someone who's got a wife and things like this, uh, number one, I hope you don't get screwed over in divorce court. 
but obviously it goes without saying that you shouldn't be doing this. It's just very funny that women get on the internet and they think that by saying, look at how all of this male attention I get, they think by saying this, it makes them look good, but it actually makes them look very bad. Okay, very, very, like if you see a woman and she's trying to brag, because that's what this is, like let's not get it twisted. Um, you know, this is a divorced woman too. A divorced woman trying to brag that she has men in her inbox, this is not a flex, okay? Women attract men simply by existing. If anything, it's actually quite repulsive. Women think that men work the same way as them, that men are interested in chasing women who have a whole bunch of dudes, but it actually puts off guys who have any level of self-respect. It puts you into the for fun box only. If she wants to go out there, she wants to entertain all of these dudes because guys, I guarantee you, she's messaging at least some of these guys, by the way. Um, if she wants to do that, that's fine, but that takes you immediately out of the relationship box and it also makes men not respect you. I guarantee you this, this woman probably doesn't care. She'll sit here and say, well, I don't care what men think. Okay, good luck to you out there dating. No, absolutely not. I want nothing to do with that. What that shows me is one, you have no respect for your girlfriend or wife. Two, you have no respect for me to think that I would want to get involved in any of that mess. And three, it shows me that you're not a man because A, you're not fixing the crap at home before you try to get out or you're not man enough to divorce that person and be done with it and put the whole situation out of its misery before you move on. Have you guys noticed that the women who are wildly unsuccessful in dating, one characteristic that they all seem to share is that they're incredibly masculine, right? They sit here on videos and they're like, yeah, here's what you need to do. And they, they, like, they give you all these lists and it feels like you're being spoken to by some sort of teacher, right? Back when you were a kid and you were in school, it's like, here's what you need to do and your homework's due on this day and blah, blah, blah. Um, the problem is when you speak to men like this, they're just going to they're just going to write you off immediately. Okay, I understand she thinks that she's doing justice, right? <laughs> Talking to these men in her DMs, okay? But what she fails to realize is that um, when you're dating in your 40s, other dudes are going to see this and they're going to be like, oh, hell no, I don't want to date this, right? And this might come as a shock to a lot of these women who are making these videos, uh, but men don't want to date masculine people. If they want to do that, they just go date other men. Right, but most men are heterosexual and they don't want to date women who are masculine. So good luck to you, madam. Right. And she's so I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll bring it up really quick now. So she's written at the bottom of this. Actually, you guys can't see this. Um it, she's wrote here, divorced and dating in her forties. And whenever I see how masculine someone is, they make videos like this, I just think to myself, Of course you're divorced, of course you're still out here dating. You, you, you know, it's like a big game of musical chairs, guys, and she's run out of chairs and none of the chairs want to be near her. You feel me? Um, of course, she's still dating because she behaves like a man. And this is what happens to women who behave like men. They are, you know, relegated permanently to the streets. I have enough crap in my life. I'm trying to fix my own problems and traumas and my own you know, red flags. So I don't need you to bring yours to me. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Have you guys noticed that some of my videos have gone missing over here on YouTube? That is because I am slowly moving them over to locals where I can actually host them without the risk of getting in trouble. If you are not aware, many creators are starting to move over to places like locals, rumble, etc. Because YouTube is not really a free speech platform. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting access to videos that are no longer available here, make sure that you come and join us over on Locals. The link will be in the video description down below. Supporters get access to their own exclusive videos that are no longer available to the public. So make sure you go to the link in the description and join us over there now. But anyway, guys, back to today's episode. I cannot even tell you how many men are in my inbox right now. Again, don't care, not a flex, but carry on. Trying to friend request me with women in their profile pictures. And I'm not talking mama, sisters, kids, or anything. I'm talking full ass girlfriends and wives. Don't do it. I highly recommend you avoid me like the plague because I am a girl girl. I promise you, if a girl messages me, says, has my man messaged you? Has he this, has he that? Well, I'm going to hell. And I'm not gonna have any regrets about it.
you know what I think, guys? I think uh, these women, right? Let me know if you agree with what I'm about to say here. I think that these women are just incredibly insecure. You know, what if the guy just wants to be friends with you? Okay, it would be rude not to send that friend request. It's only a friend request. You know what I'm saying? So what? He likes that photo of you in the bikini, okay? He's just trying to be nice. Um, it's just a like on an application. I think a lot of these women, truthfully, uh, they have a lot of healing to do. They have a lot of growing up to do. And personally, they're not even real women um, if they can't handle their man out here messaging and adding other women as friends, right? I think they have a lot of maturing to do personally. Um, but hey, you know, good luck to you. And obviously, guys, I'm saying that with complete and utter sarcasm because this is what men are given, right? If you don't want your woman adding dudes on Instagram or posting photos of herself that are questionable or doing, you know, questionable behaviors over here on these apps, um, you get called insecure. I mean, guys, go to TikTok, go to TikTok and look at these videos where these women say, yeah, my man won't let me text dudes. You have literally thousands, hundreds of thousands of likes and comments and all of this kind of stuff um, down below the videos where women are like, yeah, he's so insecure if he won't let me text men and all of this crap. It's disgusting. And I'm not going to have any regrets about it because you came to me and put me in that situation. So be prepared. You might want to avoid me. I am not that girl. I don't know about you as well, gentlemen, but I always, you know, whenever a woman says that she's not that type of girl, I'm always inclined to believe the exact opposite. I wonder if women who see this video, they're like, yeah, this woman's on my side. I would be very skeptical believing women like this. You know, anyone who has to advertise on the internet that they are a particular way, um, and just drill it into you. I'm not sure if I would go ahead and believe that, particularly if it's a very positive quality. Like, I'm a good person. I have these sorts of morals and stuff like this. I'm always inclined to believe the exact opposite. But now let's continue to the... Oh, no. Oh, no, guys. This is a divorced woman. And she's wrote on here, one-on-one -on -one coaching available. So she's divorced. And now she's a dating coach. This is what I'm talking about, men. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is like a homeless person. Excuse me if you heard that. This is like a homeless person trying to give you financial advice. Oh my goodness, man. All right, let's jump into it. That being single is a choice. It's very easy to distract yourself with dating apps and swipe and just- Again, guys, sorry to pause it so soon. I'm not the one adding the piano. Um, the women are the ones adding the piano to these videos is a choice it's very easy to distract yourself with dating apps and swipe and just go on random dates i'm speaking from experience i did this but then you're left empty and wondering why am i doing this well let me get this straight so the the female dating coach who is divorced and offering one-on-one -on -one coaching has a history of going out on dates with random dudes and feeling empty so we've, we've hooked up with a whole bunch of random guys and now we're giving dating advice to women. Mm, very interesting. Because you're numbing, you're numbing the pain. You're distracting yourself so you don't have to sit in it. And that can only last so long before it just starts catching up with you and biting you in the ass. So then you have to sit in the pain. Then you choose to sit in the pain and be alone. You have to get quiet with yourself. You have to sit and do the hard work within yourself. Yes, this includes journaling. Yes, this includes reading all of the self-help books. This means you have to be vulnerable with yourself. You have to be so raw and honest with who you are and why you're doing the things that you're doing and question everything. Okay, so let me just get this straight. Your version of doing hard work is journaling and reading books. Now, when I think of hard work, I don't think of things like this. I think of, you know, something in the construction field, maybe. You're out there laying bricks by hand, you're digging trenches, okay, you're doing something that is actually difficult. You know, maybe you're going to the gym and you're hitting the most brutal chest day of all time. I could consider these things to be hard work, you know, putting in the elbow cre a grease, so to speak. I wouldn't even lump the gym in there, actually. Gym is just way too fun to be considered work, honestly. Um, but, you know, for some people, the gym is a very difficult thing uh, to attend and continue. But anyway, this woman's definition, guys, of hard work is things like journaling, 
This is how you know society is screwed, okay? You have people out here doing genuine hard work, you know, building bridges, constructing things, maintaining our electricity grid. And then you have modern women who are like, yeah, the real hard work, it begins with the journaling. I can't, man. I can't. I'm actually going to laugh. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, society is doomed, man. I don't have anything to say other than society is doomed. This is where we're at, guys. Journaling is a difficult task. Yep. Okay. Also owning up to your mistakes that you made in your past relationship. Because the marriage ended, but it wasn't just one person's fault. And we can all sit in blaming the other person for a little while, I know. But the real healing and growth happens when you look in the mirror and start taking ownership for your part in the failure of that marriage. The more work we do, the quieter our ego gets. This was a beautiful part of my process that I am so grateful for. I never realized how much my ego was leading my life. Yes, I'm still healing. Yes, I'm still single, but I'm really happy. Wait, so the dating coach who is divorced, who is offering one-on-one -on -one coaching is still single. Now, guys, I'll just come out and say this, okay? Um, you know, women will try and be these dating coaches, but I don't consider them to be qualified to be a dating coach, period. Um, but if they are, at least be married and be in a long-term marriage, then I'll probably listen to what you have to say, or at the very least, be in a very long-term relationship with a man that you love and respect and take care of. Then, in my opinion, you know, you're qualified to give dating advice. The reason why I don't hold men to this same standard with dating advice that might be effective is because for men at, in modern day, marriage is not a win for men right? I don't think marriage should be the goal for dudes. And the reason for that is because it is absolutely rigged against men. Okay, for women, it's great. Hell, your retirement is in that marriage. You know, you stand to gain absolutely everything. If you're a woman and you get into marriage, you've, you've reached the end game, you've, you know, you finished the game here. Um, but for dudes, this really isn't a safe or a smart option. So if you have dating coaches who are online and they're trying to give advice and they're not married or that, you know, you have a woman who's not in a very long-term relationship, just pass guys. This is, again, this is the equivalent of someone who is homeless, who lives under a bridge and they're trying to teach you how to invest in rental properties. No, thank you. Guys, we are going to be leaving today's episode there as always uh, remember to leave your thoughts and your comments don't forget to put in that hard work guys maybe begin the journaling um and uh really put in that healing all right i'll see you guys in the next episode don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments make sure you take care of yourselves and i'll be seeing you all in the next one peace mm -hmm.